Hey everyone, welcome back to Sports Cards Analysis. I'm JT with another Case Break Simulation. Today we got SP Game Used Hockey 2023-24. Uh, this is a cool product. I love the look of the cards. Um, I did take a little break for spring break, took my kids uh, on a trip. So if you, there were some products missing, you know, videos missing that you needed to make your, your informed break decisions on, I apologize, but I'm back now. So um, let's start out with uh, SP Game Used after the long break there. So, uh, I like this product. I think it's uh, it's going to be successful. It's got a lot of cool cards. I like the upper decks caught up on the years, but let's look at the price. The price of this case uh, is three thirty five twenty four on Steel City or forty seven fifty eight Canadian. Um, and the reason I show you this price is because I want to tell you how to make a purchase based on the probability. You want to pay for probability. And really, the only way I've calculated to do that is to just distribute that case cost across all of the cards that you're interested in. So in this case. I sorted by the total number of autographs by team. The Flames have the most, Blackhawks, Blue Jackets. Um, and then what we do is we distribute this cost, the distribution of cost per team. We distribute the cost of the cases, in this case, Canadian or American, uh, across all the cards equally. So we're talking pennies per, you know, cents per card. Uh, and then we add them all up. And, and what that allows us to do is get a price that equals the case cost uh, per team so that you can pay for the likelihood that you'll hit that type. So for autographs, if you want to get, this is not if you want to hit the best cards, this is if you want to hit the most or you want to have the highest likelihood of hitting, you went, go get the flames. And you could pay up to three, 304 Canadian. I don't think you should pay 304 Canadian, but what I'm telling you that is if all things are equal and fair, if all the cards were treated the same, which they're not, uh, you would pay 304 for the Flames because you would walk away with the highest likelihood of hitting and probably the most cards, most autograph cards after a break. Blackhawks are next. There it is, page 1 through 10, uh, or page 1 with in order 1 through 10. There's 11 through 20. Just screenshot this stuff and uh, use it in your purchases. Use it in your purchases. Uh, that way you're making informed decisions. There we go. Um, those are just the top 30 teams. I don't think we need to go to all of them and then there's team canada at the end and i think he's just bedard i'm not sure uh the total checklist there but let's let's skip over memorabilia inserts and parallels even though the memorabilia cards in this set are phenomenal i love them i think they're great i think that's why you buy this set is for the memorabilia but i'm not gonna price my probability based on memorabilia you want autographs that's really what you want highest dollar stuff hits real hits but let's look, also look at the total number of cards and this is everything, parallels, base, inserts, uh, memorabilia, autographs, everything. And so again, there's some assumptions I'm making about the print run. Uh, like in the memorabilia, there were certain ones I just went with 100, some of them I went with 50, um, just based on what the pack odds looked like. And, and I didn't really do the precise calculations um, simply because it would have been too complex. Uh, and I didn't, I didn't think that it would add or take away from the analysis. And I, I looked through it and I don't think it did. So uh, those assumptions being made, the Blue Jackets have the most cards. And again, where I made assumptions, I made them equally across all the teams. So if I'm wrong, I'm wrong in the same order as being correct, if that makes sense. So if you want to pay for the highest probability of having the largest stack of cards at the end of a break, the most cards that you can possibly uh, hit, you want the highest probability of mail of getting a mail day you want to get the blue jackets and you could pay up to 244 dollars canadian 180 american and then this is you know one through ten in order to give you an idea of what you should pay in a fair market when all cards are equal uh for for these teams so that's that's kind of how that works um stay within these ranges here i think that uh you don't want to you don't want to overpay for the blackhawks when really you know look at the you know it's just not the value is just not there and we're going to talk about ROI so what I do with this with these simulations if you're new to the channel or if you just need a refresher I look at the checklist I have values and popularity metrics for every single player in the checklist then I created a tier list one through five tier one through tier five of these players based on their value and popularity and how uh, easy I think it will be to make a profit. Not sell, but make a profit. So you sell a card 
and you make a profit. I think that the ones are guys that are either going to team collectors or not, or you're just not going to sell them. The fives are your Bedards, your McDavid's. You're, you're going to sell them right away, and you're going to sell them for a lot of money. Um, sometimes sitting on the shelf, but making a high profit still costs you money. You have that's taking up room, especially if you're a business. Um, you know, break even points and stuff like that. So then I run 200 case break simulations, which I'll get into, and we do a lot of ROI conversations. So that's how I do this. All these prices are derived from my own analysis. So, you know, criticize me how you want, that's fine. Um, but that's the calculations I've done, and it took me a long time to develop. So that's um, going to keep iterating on it. But really, so this tier list, we want to see how this product shakes out uh, compared to other products. And this product is right along with most upper deck products. You know, Panini likes to sit in the one and two area. They have a lot of rookies that don't have a high value. They have a lot of veteran, uh, you know, autographs and stuff that may, might not be, have the most draw, um, but that's who they have. And, and it usually skews this way. Upper deck tends to be pretty even. Uh, and, and this is no exception. They have a lot of threes here, a lot of your mid tier guys. And that, that's common because um, that's probably a similar distribution in the NHL. Uh, but there's probably more fours and fives. And these are going to be your guys who, who draw a lot of money, who sell right away, your fours and fives. So it's a little less than the rest. Um, skews a little bit, but overall it's about 3.5 on the autographs and 3.5 on the total product. And this, this 3.5 includes all these memorabilia cards that are excellent. There is some weirdness here because of the mascots and stuff that I couldn't, you know, I don't have data for that. Um, but uh, but 3.0 for the autographs. Not a bad checklist, that's actually really good. But your higher value guys don't have as many cards. So now if we look at the ROI over 200 cases, so I do 200 case breaks. I'm gonna give you ROI for two different scenarios. One, across all 200 cases, and the second one for just the cases where that team hits. So for this uh, table that you're looking at now, it's just the ROI for all 200 breaks. So if you bought into 200, what is your average return uh, over 200? And then all of these, product strength um, numbers. Basically what I do is on that tiered list, I just add up all the fives, add up all the fours, add up all the threes, twos, and ones, and then uh, rank them based on how that is. And what that is, it's not just adding the individuals, it's adding every single card. So if Connor Bedard has several thousand cards and he's a five uh, on the tier list, then there's five for every single individual card etc. And I go like that. And so sometimes teams that skew more towards the one and two, you know, less ROI, uh, more money loss kind of teams, um, you get like strong teams like the Blackhawks where they have Bedard, but they wind up not being number one. You're like, why? Well, they have other players that are kind of pushing that value down because there's more fours, threes, twos, and ones, uh, if that makes sense. So that's what this tier list is based on are these product strengths. So the overall strength, the Sabres have the highest strength for autographs, for full product, for what else? Uh, uh, inserts and parallels. And so that just means that they have the you know, largest number added up over all those tiers. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, return on investment for 200 cases. If you buy 200 cases, you buy the same team every single time. Here's, the, here's what you can expect return on investment per case, 187 Canadian dollars. This is in order one through 10. So this gives you an idea, you're not gonna hit uh, in every case, but when you know, uh, if, if over the long run, if you buy into tons of kids, I know people do this with Bowman and, uh, and Upper Deck Series One and Two, just buy, keep buying and buying and buying and buying into breaks. These are your these are your ROIs. Okay, there's page two. Take that screenshot, use this in your purchases, make informed decisions, everyone, because you don't want to waste money, you don't want to get played by the breakers. Go to Break Comps on Instagram; it's a good place to go to learn about prices for for breaks. Um, he's also got a website, which I think is pretty cool. So out of those 200 case breaks, what about only when the team hits, when it hits? So let's read this table. You basically say, when you want to read this table, you can screenshot it, do whatever you want. Um, just, you know, don't try to, instead of giving it away for free, send people to my channel to watch the videos. You'd say the Avalanche autographs hit in 35 cases. And in those 35 cases, on average, we're getting a pretty good return of 725 Canadian. So that's how you read this table. Um, and so I think this is valuable because um, not only am I telling you what the ROI is when it hits, I'm also telling you how often it hits. This column here is telling you how many cases 
these things are hitting it. So avalanche autographs only hit in 35 cases. That's like one eighth of the time. So for every eight cases, when I say those fractions, you'll hit one avalanche autograph. But it does go up. You know, 55 Oilers autographs, that means one fourth of the time because there's 200 case breaks that I'm simulating here. So for every four cases, one of them has an Oilers autograph. And then we get up to something like 116. I think we're talking like, what? five eighths there uh, with the Sabres. So for every eight cases, five of them might have a Sabres autograph. And here's your ROI for that. It's much higher than the 200 because um, we're taking out all the cases that it didn't hit in. So this is just, you're just probably thinking, uh, I wanna know, I wanna buy the Kraken and I wanna know um, if I hit what I'm gonna, what my return should, should look like. Well, that's, that's about where it should be. So if you think you wanna pay around $200 for the Kraken, hey, be my guest. Um, that's what you um, should use in your in your purchases. So, the, so again, number of cases, 140 cases have Oilers memorabilia. Pretty awesome. There's page two, ROI, cases, uh, Blackhawks memorabilia. So you see the Blackhawks autographs are actually far down because their, their ROI doesn't include as many Bedards as the rest of the product. There you go, see, right here. And the, the, there are some Bedard autos in here, but they're rare. But you did get 108 Blackhawks. You know, this is important. The reason why this is important, you're probably thinking, what, 51? I'm telling you, there's only 190 Bedard autographs in this product. So you go crazy buying the Blackhawks, you might lose money. Okay, there's page six. I'll just go through like 10 pages. There's page seven, page eight, page nine, and page 10. That's uh, your expected ROI when the product or when the team hits. There you go. Now, what about the rarity of the sets? Here they are. Here's the rarity of the sets here. The reason why I'm showing you this is because if, let's say you hit a 2022 Global Series local patch relic, and you're like, well, this player is about mid-tier. I probably list this card for about 50 bucks on eBay. Well, look, it's super duper rare. Only hit and out of 200 case breaks, it hit once. So maybe price that up a little bit. Maybe 100 Canadian dollars, maybe 75 uh, um, American dollars, something like that. So there you go. Uh, there's just a couple of the most rare sets. Use this to help you price your cards. This doesn't really help you buy into breaks, but it might help you understand the actual rarity of some of these sets. They're pretty rare. Um, and that's just for the simulation. So there's also sets that might not have hit at all. Uh, I didn't include those, probably should. Um, all right, so what about by player? Uh, so this table is gonna be really informative. We wanna look at like the Blackhawks because they're super popular and we wanna see total number of autographs by player. Well, look, Connor Bedard's way down here, 191 total autographs. Now he had how many unique versions of his autograph? 16. So you might look at that and say, wow, he's got 16 different autos. He's got the most autos. But the print runs are all very low. So he's got about 191. Again, there are some assumptions about the short prints and stuff, but they're short prints, so they're going to be low. Uh, so there you go. But then you could kind of look at like the memorabilia and see, okay, 470. He's got a lot of those. You got a lot of insert cards. There's room here to hit, but the ROI, the return on investment might not be that great. So you, so you have, you know, this is the guy everyone wants, but he just doesn't have as many autographs. You're far more likely to hit Wyatt Kaiser, you know, or any of these other guys uh, than you are to hit Bedard. We can look at the Oilers as well and see where's McDavid. He's got, a, he's got less than Bedard. He's got 133. Um, so this is kind of what you want to look at when you're making these purchases don't go insane spending all your money because you think you're going to get a uh, you know an, an autograph of somebody um, let's look at Gretzky and see what he's got in here he's got 13 uh, looks like two different teams just autographs with the Oilers um, you know so don't go crazy so that's sorted by autographs we can look at like the top 20 there there they are top 20 players for autographs um, and total cards for all all types Owen Beck um, and I think uh, Connor Bedard does have a lot of cards. So he is in top 20. So you can do that. You can look at that. That's the top 20 for total cards in this product. All right, number of cards per team. We kind of talked about this already. So here's one through 10. There's uh, page two and page three. This is old information, so don't worry about it. But the reason why I show you this is because you can look at these unique numbers here. Like this team has 61 unique cards. That's set types, you know, this type of autograph or this type of insert card. But when you do the print runs, it's actually third. So that's why I show that. Um, don't get fooled by the unique number of cards. Uh, 
one of ones this product has 719 one of ones and if you want one of them here's the top 10 teams to buy for one of ones total cards out of one per team here's the top 10 buy one of those teams if you're chasing one of ones now here's the simulation results for one case I just want to show you this case because it's case number 200 out of the simulation just to show you hey I do the simulation here's the results you can expect if you find any flaws or whatever maybe you can let me know I'll fix my simulation 108 cards per case everything seems to be good so these are the card types we hit um, with the autographs you you're only guaranteed autographs or a premium memorabilia so you might not get the same amount of autographs per case so here's kind of the SJ Sharky I don't even know how to price that but the mascot logos this is what one case was able to yield I'll go a couple pages in and I have it sorted by the rarest card so you know a lot of stuff out of 35 a um, lot of stuff out of 150 not 150 but 100 or 50 I made that was those were kind of numbers that I I uh, gravitated towards when I was making some of my assessments so there you go there's three pages worth of the simulated case break now let's look at how many one of ones we got we got 67 so if you are chasing one of ones which I believe many of you are you'll get there's more than a, a one-fourth chance you know that you're going to get a one of one 25 percent of the cases a little more than that 30 percent of the cases there was a one of one and here they are I just show you that they exist there's seven pages of them I'm not going to go over all of them and there you go now ROI by team so I've showed you the ROI by team for uh, on average but let's look at 20 cases and you just look through this and you can see that case by case things change one case might have a lot of Bruins one case might have a lot of Blackhawks one case might have a lot of Oilers this is how it changes but look at this and if you're if you have a team in mind maybe you want you know the Devils look at them over time over 20 cases and see is there value there is this team ever hitting in 20 cases so I'm just gonna scroll through this pick your team look at them you know Oilers look they hit big there um, Red Wings are they have a little bit of value on that break but not in that one the Blackhawks hit big there but then they don't hit very very well there so just look at this and this will help you kind of decide which team uh, is worth spending money on Wow look at that one uh, and which teams aren't and that way you don't waste your money I don't even know what team this is um, there's no logo on it that's oh that's probably um, like Team Canada I would guess so there's that uh, avalanche have that break so there you go now you know now you have a good idea of which teams might actually hit on a routine basis and which ones are very rare now in the simulation total cards by team only within the simulated case breaks not the whole checklist so there they are one through ten I don't know if people even care about that table so I'm not gonna spend much time on it now the one of ones we did hit here's the teams I hit the most one of ones on Bruins Blue Jackets Jets stars there you go so if you want the one of ones use that table above that was of the master checklist and this one's of the simulation now final table here let's just look at the breakdown by card type for 200 cases what did I hit uh, I hit 203 Columbus Blue Jackets autos uh, 100, almost 200 flames 179 Blackhawks there you go that's 1 through 10 of the autographs I hit what about inserts here's one through the top 10 teams for insert card hits here's the top 10 teams for memorabilia card hits tons of Bruins that's awesome so that might be a team worth buying there and parallels which not there's not very many to begin with there's the top 10 teams for parallels that's it that's 2023 20, 24 SP game used hockey thanks for watching like subscribe tell your friends do everything uh, you know and good luck in your breaks because that's the point here right bye